thanks uh, everyone for joining us this morning for our fire safety presentation with Bernadette Galvez. Bernadette's the community education expert with Madison Fire Department. And uh, Bernadette, before we get started, I want you to tell people how you got into this uh, career. You know, what drew you into this field? Absolutely. So um, I've always, since I was young, I've always, always want, like, enjoyed people and also to help people. Um, you know, my dad was in the healthcare field um, and just, I, I don't know, I, you just get drawn to it and um, I, I just love it. I've been in this position or with the, actually with the city of Madison fire department for over 30 years. I absolutely love it. And when people say, I want you to retire, it's like, I love my job. <laughs> you know, I absolutely <laughs> love it. I don't mm -hmm. have to, you know, I don't physically go into the, in to fight the fires. I actually am one of the people who help afterwards and also prior to fires and medical emergencies. We try, again, fire prevention or um, injury and fire prevention. I absolutely love this job. Right. And I, I know that uh, you put on a terrific uh, program in June, Safety Saturday. I enjoyed uh, working with you on that as well. That was yes. a lot of fun. Yes, absolutely. But yes, I teach fire safety from the unborn because we also do car seats all the way to, you know, everybody's living long lives over in their hundreds. Um, so it's, and what's neat about my job is you, you're actually teaching people about life and death but you know in a way that they understand and not too afraid because again things certain things are preventable and people can and can help uh do things i'm i want to tell you guys i'm very impressed that you guys are all on zoom i i'm impressed and <laughs> i have i had trouble when i first started doing it and like today mike is helping me so yay thank you everybody for being here so mike can i should i go ahead yeah, go ahead, Bernadette. Let's launch into it. We're fighting okay. fires now, and we're stopping them before they even get started, right? <laughs> yes. So um, I am Bernadette uh, with the Madison Fire Department. And um, so if there's any questions, if you, anybody has any questions during my presentation, um, and of course, I'll get them afterwards, you can go ahead and ask me, you know, because I sometimes forget if somebody's talking, it's like, oh, I've got to ask them later. And then it's like, oh, I forgot my question. So I'm okay with you asking me if I'm talking about something, um, ask me. I may cover it later, but um, I don't mind at all. I'm very informal. So the top fire causes are cooking, heating, electrical, smoking, and candles, okay? Cooking, heating, electrical, smoking, and candles. And we're gonna go over each of these. Another thing that I do and I tend to do and you guys, I talk fast. So tell me to slow down if I do. So cooking, okay? Everybody cooks um, and cooking is actually the number one cause of fire. Like I said, everybody cooks. And I know my slides sometimes have a lot of um, wordings to them, but um, I'm gonna also add to them. And a lot of my information is coming from the uh, National Fire Protection Association. And I'll give this all to Mike and he can share, but very simple words, very good um, website that we always refer to because they have panels of people um, who gather information and um, really good. So whenever people cook, right? You don't have a smoke alarm in your kitchen because you're supposed to be standing up and not laying down um, when it comes to cooking. So a, a lot of the reasons why we get called is people cook on their stove and they forget about it and they leave for work, okay? And then the smoke alarms go off. Or people are cooking, they leave the room, either go to the restroom or they get distracted on a video or television and then a, a fire starts on the stove. Don't leave the kitchen. If you leave the kitchen, turn off your stove, okay? Um, when it comes to uh, grease fires, uh, I just wanna see what I have here. When it comes to grease fires, 
let's pretend you guys are cooking, um, let's say French fries. Grease fires are bad um, when they come um, and make a fire. So there's three things, think back when you were younger, three things you learned that make and support a fire. Oxygen, fuel, and an ignition source. Oxygen, fuel, and an ignition source. So think about it when you're on a stove, and let's pretend you're you're cooking on the stove, and that um, grease boils over, right, or starts to, and you're noticing it. One of the things you can do is to get rid of that oxygen. Don't throw a towel over it. Okay, you should prior to even starting to cook, you should have a a nice fitting lid that fits on that pan. So in case something happens. You slide that pan on that lid on top of that pan, and that will get rid of the oxygen. Okay. The other thing you can do is get rid of the heat. So you can turn it off. But sometimes that switch, the, the knobs to turn off that heat is over the top of your stove, right? In the back. So if you if you can't turn that off safely, slide that pan off to another burner. But if you can turn that heat off. Um, in front, turn it off. No matter what happens, and there's, you know, you have smoke and all that, call 911. I know a lot of people are afraid, but call 911. If your apartment or your house starts to get really smoky, we have large fans that can um, put that, just get rid of that smoke. So another thing that people tell me that you can put fires out with on the stove um, is salt right, or baking soda or flour. Flour is actually flammable, it can be. Um, so um, you grab the flour, you put it out, it, it, it sometimes can get to the flammable point. Salt, people have grabbed salt and baking soda. The thing about those two, where's the salt, where's the baking soda? It's kept in the cupboard or kept in the refrigerator. So you're reaching for it, the fire's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Fire doubles in size every 30 seconds. Fire doubles in size every 30 seconds. So you're reaching for that um, and you're it's getting bigger. You're reaching in the cabinet, it's getting bigger. So um, just be aware um, when you're cooking, you know, and don't blast your heat. The other thing that we find when it comes to cooking, people want to cook, uh, make a pizza and they turn the stove on instead of the oven. Well, there's Tupperware and plastics and cloths on top of that stove top, and that starts on fire, okay? And think about the other. If they think they're turning on that stove and accidentally turn on the oven, and their oven's used as a storage unit, there's pots, pans, cords, Tupperware. Um, so, you know, make sure that those things are used only what they're, supposed, they're meant for, okay? Um, so cooking is a number one cause of fire. You call 911, call 911. People also say, Bernie, that what about uh, um, fire extinguishers? Yes, you can use a fire extinguisher, but I'm on a fence on an extinguisher because they're not easy to use. They're not easy. There's an acronym, P-A-S-S. -S. Pull the pin, aim the hose, squeeze the handle and sweep back and forth. Fire extinguishers only last about 30 seconds. So the best thing to do is get out, close the door behind you, and then call 911. Okay, that's when it comes to the, to the kitchen fires. Um, but be aware, be safe. Um, kitchen fires also include um, microwaves. Often we get called for people who want to cook um, microwave popcorn. They push the popcorn button. Well, it's too much. Don't, again, don't leave the kitchen. So what you're supposed to do is you listen to that popcorn and once it stops popping, you stop it, okay? Sometimes that popcorn button is like over five minutes. That's that's a long time. So again, don't, don't leave that kitchen if you can help that. Okay, soon, this is my favorite time of year is, is fall. So, but soon, we're gonna come up upon, upon winter, so heating. Bernadette, could you just explain what to do if you do have a little fire in your microwave? Yes, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. So if you have a, a, a fire in your microwave, 
don't open it. Because if you open it, that I don't know if you guys ever had a, a microwave fire. If the pot, it reeks, it stinks. So don't open that microwave, okay? Um, if you can push stop, and if you can safely unplug it, you can also do that, but leave it. And if not, um, and then, you know what, call us, and then we can remove that microwave um, and put it outside. That's what we usually do. And then if it's outside, then we can, um, most of the time it's okay, um, but then they can bring it back in. But thank you, don't open that microwave, okay? Because then again, adding that oxygen can actually make that fire spread and that the bag that the popcorn is in um, can start a bigger fire. The kids, the kids who sometimes have to be at home for just a little bit until the parent gets home from work, um, they like the mac and cheese. I tell them, do not use the stove. The parents tell them, do not use the stove or the oven while I'm gone. But sometimes what they use, they like is that mac and cheese. And that mac and cheese, they're supposed to add water and then put it in the microwave. Well, children confess to me and say, I forget sometimes to put the water in it. And, and, and then that thing, the, the bowl melts. And so um, I tell them, please make peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Don't use anything. Just wait till somebody comes home, um, <laughs> even not to use the microwave. But yes, thank you. Thank you for telling me that. Thank you. Okay, so the heating. So we get these um, uh, space heaters. So way back when, and some people may still have them and they might still have them at uh, the thrift stores. Remember the space heaters, you could see the hot coil? Well, now they're ceramic um, and they're on a timer. And if they get knocked over, they automatically shut off. If you have a space heater, you're supposed to keep three feet away from that heater, okay? Um, anything combustible, anything. Now, some people have those space heaters in the office and in the, uh, and even in, at home. And sometimes they put a, a sweater on the back of their chair, which spins. And sometimes when they turn, that sweater or jacket starts on fire because that space heater is too close. So be aware of that space heater and how far that is. You're supposed to turn it off when you leave your room. And even at night, turn that off. I know that sounds crazy, but turn it off. Sleep with socks and warm up and, and um, more blankets if you have to. But when you're sleeping, I would even uh, keep that space heater off, okay? Um, carbon monoxide detectors, anything that's fuel burning, you want carbon monoxide detectors in your home. It's actually a state ordinance to have one on every level, okay? You know, fireplace, uh, your furnace, your dryer, anything that's fuel burning, have a carbon monoxide detector. Back, um, the carbon monoxide detectors only lasted five years. Now they're like smoke alarms. They can last for up to 10. You just have to um, be sure you, that you, you look at the, the um, the packaging. Um, so that's what the, um, be careful. We always get calls when it comes to small uh, space heaters. So just be careful. Uh, so Bernadette, I'm to yes, go ahead. Uh, sorry to interrupt. I do have a question about the um, oil filled radiator style yes. heaters that are on wheels. How safe are they? Do you, do you recommend them for heating? So I actually had one. So um, when it comes to the, the sealed, I know they're sealed because we had, they're very, very good. I like them. Same thing though, because they can get pretty hot. So just make sure that you have distance between um, um, that heater and combustibles. And I know it's, kind of, it's, a, it's on a thermostat too, where if it reaches that heat, it shuts off or keeps that temperature. Um, Honestly, we we have not had um, that I know of um, a fire start because of those. But just be careful, you know. Don't put clothing over it to dry your clothes or blankets or anything. Um, but treat it the same as a space heater. But good question. 
Thank but you so much. Sealed. Yep, those, that's a great question. Electrical, this is huge because electrical, especially when it comes to um, um, extension cords. Okay, extension cords, you guys are temporary, temporary use. Extension cords are not to run appliances. Um, so if let's, for example, uh, a shop vac. If you have a shop vac, you can use that on an extension cord. That's temporary. Unplug it, okay? Extension cords have caused so many fires. I'm not talking about the surge protectors. I'm talking about extension cords. Don't run them under a carpet. Don't run them um, up on your walls and, and through um, um, ceilings, drop ceilings. We, that's a fire code violation. We, there's been so many fires. Um, don't daisy chain. That means from a cord to a cord to an appliance. When it comes to um, like uh, refrigerators, microwaves, those should be directly plugged into an outlet. Do not run those to an extension cord. When it comes to um, toasters, use your toaster and then unplug it. Since I started working for the fire department, I have found out that even though you're not using your toaster, there's been recalls because they start fires when you're not using it. So unplug it when you're not using it. Same with the toaster oven, I would do the same thing. But, but when, when it comes to refrigerators, um, um, where have I seen it? Microwaves, those, are, those draw a lot. So do not plug those into an extension cord or a surge protector. Those have caused fires. Um, it is so common that people run extension cords again underneath a, a rug. If you need an electrician to make another outlet, please have them do that. But we have written up many people in businesses, especially um, using extension cords because they don't have enough outlets. Um, and, and they have caused so many fires. So that's huge. Light bulbs, you know, now that there's LEDs, we don't have that many problems anymore, um, but make sure the wattage is correct on the, on, a, on the light bulbs too. Smoking, smoking's the number one cause of death. So what people do is they'll smoke and they're in their chair or couch and they fall asleep and it drops into the foam um, a cushion of the chair and urethane foam is so toxic. So, so toxic. What's funny is that when I go to a school and I hold up a match or I hold up a lighter, the children have no idea what those are because I'm hoping that means less people are smoking. Um, so uh, they do know what a barbecue lighter is, but not um, when it comes to a lighter or match. Um, less people are smoking. If you smoke, make sure it, it um, you have a container of either sand or water and make sure it's out. Some people, and every year we get this, um, especially outside when they, people are good about smoking outside, but then when it's time to come back in, they put their cigarette out in a planter box, which includes um, peat moss. We've had so many fires. And then the planter um, starts on fire, starts the outside of the building on fire, and then goes up into the building. So make sure that is snuffed out completely, okay? If please, this is the other thing. If you're on oxygen, please don't smoke. I know it's a hard habit to, to, to quit, but if you smoke and you're on oxygen, um, oxygen supports that flame, okay? Oxygen has, supports that flame. Unfortunately, way back, um, I haven't, I have, Again, I've been in the job forever, and unfortunately, we've had a person, a person uh, pass away. Um, but um, when it comes to oxygen and smoking, not a good combination. Okay. Um, I, again, I know that's that's a hard habit to 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 quit, but just be aware. Electric cigarettes, e-cigarettes. Um, there's batteries in there, and those actually start fires. That's a new thing. That's different to me. <laughs> you know, Bernadette, one thing yes. I remember from my grandpa a long time ago, 
you know, he had his newspaper rack sitting right beside his, you know, where he, his little piece of furniture sitting right beside his easy chair. And on top of that newspaper rack was a place for an ashtray, you know, wow. so he could have his pipe or cigarette there, whatever it was, you know. And so, I mean, essentially, you know, his cigarette was sitting above the newspapers. Right. And that was that was a common design for furniture, you know, back in the 60s, you know. Yes. And and they don't and it's usually packed. Right. Yeah. There's little slots for the cigarette and it's usually um, full. Yep. Yeah. My, yeah. I remember something <laughs> like that. Um, OK, can I have a, I have a question. What is a fire? What was that fire or something? Fire safe cigarette. What is that? So that's supposed to um, stop. So if you if you put your cigarette down after smoking it, it's supposed to uh, kind of self extinguish. To, but um, as it comes down a little more. So, um, but if you set it down, it's supposed to uh, um, extinguish itself. Okay. Yeah. That 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 was brought up a long time ago. Um, but most of the time. Um, so a lot of the times, um, so it's the peat moss and then, okay, students are coming back and here on the campus, that's 44,000 students and then you add faculty, that's 60,000. So um, what we find is some of the students, they'll put that cigarette, whether it's a safe cigarette or not, they'll like, they'll put it on banisters or, things where they're not supposed to be and then they start or else they'll flick it and think that it without putting it out and then we end up having fires and unfortunately we we haven't had a decent rain um so that too um gets plays a factor but safe the safe cigarettes um was a, a thing where they're supposed to self-extinguish good question all right candles they banned candles from the uw campus if you live on campus, you're not, you cannot have candles on campus um, because they cause too many problems and they were not in a holder. So if you have candles um, and they are nice smelling, um, make sure they're in a proper holder. Um, and, it, and like the space heaters, if you leave the room, blow the candle out. Animals, if you have a cat or if you have a dog, they have we've been known to knock these over um and and uh start a fire okay um make again make sure they're in a sturdy uh holder um and just blow it out before you leave before you leave the house make a round you know walk around your house or your apartment make sure the iron's off even though those are self turn off also the stove's off the candles are blown out don't run a candle while you're sleeping um like i like having the windows open uh you know you don't have curtains but it's like curtains would blow and then could catch that curtain on fire with uh a candle they do make flameless candles that smell and flicker i know it's not the same but they have those and they sell them um during halloween they put them in the windows which is kind of neat because they do kind of neat they look neat and they do flicker and then we don't have to worry about those. Those are battery operated. That's pretty cool. But again, have distance from that candle um, from any anything that can combust or fall over. There's something called, uh, so there's somewhere they were allowed to have candles. But if they find out that that wick on that candle is black, you're in trouble. They find you. What I mean by that is when you buy a new candle, that candle wick is white because it has not been burnt yet. But once you light it, it turns black. So they they nail people like, ah, you get fined because I see that you lit your candle. So um, candle safety is, is something I'm glad that the UW banned the candles. But that's when you live on campus. Okay, sprinkler systems. Sprinkler systems are wonderful. So um, we were trying to get those in all homes, single family homes. Now anything that's built, there's tons and tons of construction going on in Madison um, and everything's now sprinklered. So what sprinklers do is when they hit, um, I thought I had my sprinkler here, but 
when there's a bulb, there's a glass bulb, um, and in that glass bulb is glycerin, and in that glycerin is a is a bubble. They're usually rated at 135, 155 degrees. Once that hits that mark, that bubble, it expands, breaks that glass, and then there's there's water that will extinguish that the flames. Not maybe not fully extinguisher extinguish it, but also at bay and put it at bay. Then we still have to come. It's not going to get rid of the firefighters' jobs. We still come to make sure. Don't hang anything from that sprinkler head. Um, it's got to do its job um, and don't block it. The other thing I want to say about sprinklers, it is not like the movies. Not all sprinklers will open up in the whole building. It's only that one. So if, but if that heat and flame go across the wall the ceiling, because remember heat, smoke rises. And if that sprinkler head, right, goes off at 155 degrees, if it's still not, the fire's not out, when that smoke and flame goes over to the next one and hits that smoke, uh, that sprinkler head, it will open up. You guys, I've been on this job again for over 30 years. It, it's mostly only been one sprinkler head that's put out that fire. Only once have there been three, and that's at um, Aramark where there are uniforms for mechanics and people who work with oily uh, clothes. So it's they self-combusted in these big, huge bins. Um, and then they started three bins on fire and that's when three sprinkler heads went off. But um, sprinklers are good. Now, even if you have a sprinkler in your apartment or your home, it doesn't mean you can't leave. You still have to leave your home or apartment. If you hear that smoke alarm, oh, I'm, I'm protected. No, you still have to leave. Um, because they're, you know, there's still smoke, there's still toxic um, elements in that. So please, please, just because your um, your sprinkler doesn't mean you should not leave. Okay. So my here we go. The, here is something that I'm going to try. <laughs> we worked on this, so let's see. Um, I'm going to share my screen, you guys. Okay, can you guys, can you see that, Mike? Uh, not yet, Bernadette, switch to your uh, video screen that you had set up there. So that's two, one. There you go. Okay. So that's, that's if you didn't have a sprinkler system. So now here's if you have a sprinkler system. different totally totally two different um scenarios so um let me see if i can get back over um when it comes to sprinklers versus non so that sprinkler will will put that fire out quick you know quick quick quickly it will put that fire out um or at least extinguish it to the point where you you can safely get out. Um, How long does it take? I I didn't quite get it on the time. You want to see How long again? does it take? You know, once I mean, it takes so many minutes to call nine one one, right? And then right. Uh, it takes time to get the firemen in their outfits, exactly. and then they have to get. I mean, we had a fire, a vehicle crash with fire uh, in front of my house, and it took about ten minutes. The so guy was our, a goner before they got there. 
Yeah, so our our thing is four to six minutes. And um, people, so that's the thing, Mike, that's a good thing. People have to call us. They have, they can't assume others are going to call. Mm -hmm. And the quicker people can call 911, the quicker we can get there. So exactly. So what happens when someone calls 911, it goes to what's called a call taker. That mm -hmm. person, and we have so many hangups. People will hang up, like, come quickly. It's like, click, wait, where are you? So we can't tell exactly where people are, especially when they're on a cell phone. Like if you're somewhere, give us a landmark, um, name, address, is anybody hurt? So as you're talking to the call taker on 911, they'll get specific information. And then as you're talking to that person, they will send it over to the fire and police desk. So it's like, well, get off the phone, send somebody. It's like, they already did, they already are. So they're still getting information from you as they're dispatching us out the door. So we, we are on our way and as they're getting information, it shows up on our computers, on our trucks. But um, the quicker people can call, the quicker we can get there. But you're absolutely right. Two minutes, three minutes, you know, it keeps going. So the quicker we can get there, uh, the people call us, the quicker we can. So that's what's also with the sprinkler system is that with, within two minutes, three minutes, that sprinkler is activated and, and then it will uh, suppress that fire and then get us there. Otherwise, where people are very nosy, not nosy, they're very curious. So they're like, what's going on? I, why is the smoke alarm going off? Do I have to leave? It's like it's going off for a reason. Well, what if it's a drill? If you don't, don't assume it's a drill. It's okay to get outside and not smell the, and not breathe in the toxins or you won't survive. Um, so because uh because um everything now is made out of uh, plastics right everything used to be made out of um leather cotton where everything's natural everything not it takes 20 minutes you it used to take 20 minutes now plastics you guys it only takes two and a half minutes that's it you have that much little time and that's how much we time we can also get in there even with our gear, even with our air pack, we still have to get down low. Yeah, fires, fire can get scary, but you guys can get out. Just listen and get out safely. So self-preservation, once you listen to that smoke alarm and once you listen to that fire alarm, you're okay. Just, just react though. Don't say, oh, it's okay. It's like, and everybody, if you can leave, you need to leave the building. So exit lights are important. You, in, in this um, slide, you can see those two things on either side of that exit sign. Those automatically turn on if um, like the power goes out. Those are battery operated. That's part of the fire code that we test and the inspectors and even your building maintenance should once in a while uh, push, push on those. Um, know your exit, just like you're in, when you're in a plane or you're in the movie theater, what's the first thing they tell you? is they tell you your exits, you know, and look for the signs and count the doors, count the seats. Do the same thing when you're at your place. Take a walk and, and just practice. Doesn't have to be when there's a fire, just practice. Um, I tell people exercise, even when you're watching TV, lift up your legs. When you're standing, lift up your knees. You know, if you're just sitting there, you know, just exercise. You need to, to move your joints. You need to be able to get up you know, to get out. So uh, we, there's that thing about extinguishers. They're 75 feet apart from each other. Um, so I was at an apartment complex a long time ago and there were three extinguishers and the apartment was destroyed because they thought they could put that fire out with an extinguisher. They grabbed one while well, they didn't put it out. It was only last 30 seconds. They had to go run and get another one. That other one is 150 feet. Now, because they're 75 feet, they had to grab another one. I don't know which way they went, but um, uh, they, that is some, they're 75 feet apart. Okay, hoarding. Hoarding and housekeeping. So this is for safety for you and I, for uh, firefighters and us, yes. Uh, can you switch to your other screen? Oh. Your uh, slide screen. Uh, this one? There you go. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so hoarding, 
Um, so when it comes to hoarding, um, and I get it, you guys mind, once all of four of us children left, I'm out of focus, um, they became hoarders because somebody told me it's because um, now they had, you know, my mom used to cook, clean, make our clothes and did everything for us. Now it's like she ended up holding on to everything and the house was really got pretty bad. So the thing is, how do we get our cot in there? How do I, how do we find you? What happens if um, stuff falls on top of you? What happens if stuff falls on top of us? Um, so when it comes to hoarding, or you guys don't know why I'm not in focus, um, try your best, you know, to, to make sure there's there's areas that we can we can get to you um, and um, that that we have a clear clear path to get to you. Think about like cooking or candles or incense, anything like that. And if that catches on fire and then you're then blocked, then everything's blocked and you can't get get um, get out. So um, so be careful and it's not unusual. Okay, it's not unusual. Ask for help. We also have community paramedics. Um, and um, that can also help. Um, nope, I'm busy, can't answer the phone. <laughs> um, so just be careful. Exits, again, think when you were young, two exits out, a window and a door, quickest way out is the door. Um, and again, practice before you even have a fire. Practice going out the door, if, if for some reason, if you can't go to get out your door, um, keep that door closed. Remember, use the back of your hand to check if it's hot because the back of your hand is more sensitive than the front. If you can't go through the, that door, go to your window. You don't need to jump. You don't need to do anything like that, but just yell, um, shake a, a, a shirt or something, get somebody's attention. They'll see uh, you. The neighbors will see you before we even get there. But keep that door closed. Smoke will hold back smoke and fire, okay? But again, the easiest and safest way, listen to the smoke alarms, get out and um, go out your, your door. Um, but again, practice, practice without even a fire even starting. And, you know, let, and also going back to pretend, people are like cattle. You go in and out the same way. So pretend that that one main entrance is blocked. Look for another exit. People are, are, I mean, of course the alarms will sound when you're going out an emergency exit. Don't go out it, but pretend. Just pretend you gotta look, let's, you know, I need to find another exit. So practice a fire drill on your own, um, just to make sure you know where your exits are. So this was a picture that was taken and they blocked the exit. How are you supposed to get out with all that trash, all those boxes um, to get out uh, safely? That's a marked exit. So again, make sure marked or unmarked that you can leave safely out of a, um, an exit that you're supposed to be able to, to get out of. If you guys live in apartments, if you see something, say something. If they're propping open the exit, the uh, emergency exits, that's your stairwell, that's a safe place supposed to be. When you see these uh, construction sites going up, the first things that go up are the stairwells and the elevator shaft. Okay, so um, those elevators need to be, uh, and the um, uh, staircases, that's a, supposed to be a safe place. So if you, you're propping open that fire door from your hallway that goes into the stairwell, you can, that's not good. You can, the smoke can get up into your your space and you're trying to leave. Um, if people are leaving and if it's attended and people are moving, fine, but then get rid of that prop door, okay? Smoke alarms, carbon monoxide, that is required. Smoke alarms, one in every bedroom or sleeping area, one on every level. There should be a, a smoke alarm six feet outside that do the bedroom doors out in the hallway. Okay, there are combination smoke and fire alarms. A carbon monoxide, I'm sorry, carbon monoxide and smoke. But after 10 years, that whole unit is to be replaced. 
We don't do six, uh, nine volt batteries anymore every six months. The whole unit comes down and the dates in the back. Yes, they don't, some of them don't last 10, they last eight, they last nine, but now you don't have to keep changing that battery. Uh, we mark them on the outside on the year that we installed them or people can mark them saying it expires in what, 2032, okay? So, um, and they can be plugged in and they can be a battery. Could you, could, you repeat, could you repeat where the fire, uh, the smoke alarm should sure. be? So in every sleeping area. So um, where there is a- In the bedroom? Yes, ma'am, yes, in the bedroom. I know it seems a lot, um, but you're supposed to sleep with your bedroom closed. So one inside every bedroom and one on every level. So in the bedroom level, there should also be, the one that counts for that level is uh, no more than six feet outside those bedroom doors. So I know it's a lot. We have a house um, in the Hilldale area and all the bedrooms are in one corner. And yes, each bedroom should still have a smoke alarm inside. And then right outside those um, is another smoke alarm. The one thing to be careful of is a, a bathroom. If you have a smoke, don't put the smoke alarm in front of a bathroom because steam can actually set those off. Okay. So if you have a fan in the bathroom, windows, open those up so it doesn't activate. Now, the newer smoke alarms has a hush button. So if it, let's say it does go off because of steam, you know it's not a fire, take a broom handle. You do not have to climb a ladder. Take a broom handle, push and hold that button, and will beep, 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 and then it will reset itself after 10 minutes. It could be a single button, or there's one that says push to test or push to hush, or it's just one button. It's the same, same thing. And so then have it one on uh, one on every level for a smoke alarm and for carbon monoxide. Now, if you have like um, this is common, if you have a three-bedroom house and one of them is a sewing room but there's no bed, there's no couch, you know, no sofa bed, you don't have to put a smoke alarm in that room. Sometimes it's an office building, uh, office, they made it into a den. Again, there's no pull out couch. There's no uh, futon. You don't have to put a smoke alarm in there, but if you were to sell the house, you have to put a smoke alarm in that room. Hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, yes, it's very confusing. And when this ordinance first came out, everybody thought they had to have hardwired smoke alarms. You don't, because some some homes had smoke alarms only in the hallway, which were hardwired. And then they thought, oh no, now I have to hire an electrician to put them all in the bedrooms. You can have those, keep those hardwired smoke alarms in the hallway, but just add, the battery operated ones in the bedrooms. Okay. So do, yeah, it was confusing. Do the battery operated ones also last for 10 years? Yes, they're supposed to. I say that because some people have found out that some of them only last nine years or 10 years, but yeah, they're, they should. If they last long, less than that, then we tell them to contact the company directly. And they're usually um, good about, uh, sending them a, uh, another one back. So now here's, this is a city ordinance, okay? This is a city ordinance. So if you live outside the city, it's not necessarily, it's not um, an ordinance to some towns that it's required. We are requiring it. Some places now do re, um, follow it, but don't, don't um, find it as an ordinance. Okay, so here's another thing. I hope this isn't too confusing. You have your single family home or you, yeah, you live in a single family home or you own a condo. We are not allowed in your private place unless we are invited or unless there's an emergency call. So if you don't have a smoke alarm, we don't know that. Um, you know, it's up to you guys to do that. But we won't know that unless you had a fire 
or unless you have a medical emergency. You can get fined $172 per alarm. So unfortunately, we've been to houses that have fires. One alarm went off, luckily, but then we find out they're, they're not anywhere else in each room we can find them. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So in 2009, we had, this is that, that ordinance. The reason why we have this ordinance is because unfortunately a gentleman uh, died on campus and the, the parents were very, very um, proactive about it. And that helped us with this ordinance, having one in every bedroom, one on every, every level. And it isn't a 10 year lithium. Okay, because the lithium batteries do last and they have, so they have to be 10 year lithium tamper resistant. We find that the students ended up taking them down. And, and so now what's nice is the landlords have this thing that we made, they can sign and have the tenant sign saying, okay, I put these smoke alarms in, you see the proof that I put it in tenants, now it's up to you. You can't, do not take those down. It will be your responsibility, not mine, because I, I am putting these in according to ordinance. So now they should be tamper resistant. Okay, so again, carbon monoxide, one on every level, battery or plug-in, um, carbon monoxide. What's nice is they're also, you know, um, up to 10 years. And these I like having almost like eye level because then, you know, some of them are, they will tell you what the carbon monoxide is. Oh, I wanted to tell you on every big red rig, we have monitors. So if you, and don't hesitate to call, you guys do not hesitate to call us. If you think there's a monoxide thing going on, we have monitors, okay, that will read the levels. Just leave, leave the place and then we will, we will make, um, we will read those levels. Um, so if, if this is the thing I found, like if it's a sprinkler, sprinkler, carbon monoxide or smoke alarm, it's reduced the deaths 82%. We hope that increases even more. So here is another one. I hope this works. Okay, so uh, one, I think, I think, I think, I think. Can you guys see that smoke coming out of a window, Mike? Yep, I got it. Okay. Oh my God. This is that is insane. In the event of a fire, who here thinks that you're safer sleeping with the doors open? I keep them open because I was a mom for so long. My kids' room is two doors down from mine. Always open. I'm not all that confident they would stop anything anyway. Harold, hey, Ben. Ben, nice to meet you. Harold, have a seat. Hi, nice to meet you guys. Hello, Hello. I'm right here. Chris, how are you? Great. As you think about fire safety, what keeps you up at night? Yeah, I'm not too concerned. I probably don't think about a fire threat as much as I should, because I do forget to turn things off often. Have you ever been through one? A fire? No. We told you that you'd be coming here today for discussion, but what we didn't tell you is that there is also a demonstration that we want to show you. Sound good? I want to introduce you to Steve, the director of the UL Firefighter Safety Research Institute. I'll let Steve take it away. Welcome. My job is to lead a team of people that study how fire grows and spreads so we can keep you safe. Here at the Delaware County Emergency Services Training Center, we essentially turn this place into a laboratory. Uh, we've got several structures around here that we build to simulate where you live. And one of those structures is right here behind me. What I want you to do is I want to take you inside here and I want you to see how this looks like your home. And then once we get you outside, we're going to go ahead and recreate what would happen if there was a fire in this structure right here. Look pretty normal. Yeah. Yeah. Got some furnishings. 
you'll notice the difference down here as we walk down. This bedroom door will be closed and the one at the end of the hall will be open. And what I want you to do is pay attention to the comparison of the two of those and think about you and your family trying to survive this fire. All right, we just hit the button, we have ignition. Oh boy, there she goes. Oh man, that is scary. It's scary, yeah, right? It's really scary. Look, we have wow, smoke I'm coming out over here already. Smoke's coming out. <gasps> what a lot of people don't realize is that the furnishings that are in our homes today are made of synthetic materials. So they burn so much faster than your old natural cotton-filled furnishings used to be. The statistics that we've seen through our research is in about 40 years ago, you had about 17 minutes to get out of your house after the smoke alarm sounded. Now you have less than three minutes. Crap. See, this is what we're, this is the things that we were. Oh my God. Whoa. Oh my God. Can you feel that? How can you survive that? Seriously. That is insane. All right, go ahead, knock it down. All right, as you remember, closed door on the left, open door on the right. And you can see the dramatic wow. difference between the two with the simple closed door. Impressive. We want people to be as prepared as possible and understand the importance and how little time you have and what that simple barrier can provide to you and your family should you have a fire. I want you guys to throw some hard hats on and some safety glasses and at least poke your heads in the windows or you can even walk in the hallway if you want. Give me a word or phrase to describe what you just saw. Anxiety. Frightening. Terrifying. I really didn't expect anything like this. I'll ask you one last time, in the event of a fire, are you safer sleeping with the doors open or the doors closed? Without a doubt, the door closed. Definitely with the doors closed, and from now on, the doors will be shut at night. <laughs> Definitely closed. Closed. Definitely closed. And I'm surprised by it. It's always great to be able to get the message out. When we can take our research and get it out into the community to change behavior with the message of close before you doze, it, it feels great and hopefully we can save lives. If there was one bit of advice that you could give friends or family today, what would it be? Close before you doze. 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 The key fire safety messages we want people to have are, one, have working smoke alarms in every level of your home, inside and outside every sleeping room. We want everybody to have an escape plan. Should you have a fire, you should know how to get out quickly. And if you can't get out quickly, having a closed door between you and where that fire is is critical to your survival. Impressive, huh? I mean, it is, that is just something that, can you see that, Mike, am I back on my slides? Yeah, you're back. I was okay. surprised that there was so little uh, infiltration in the uh, closed yes. room. Maybe. Yeah, that, that's amazing. That was a great film. Yeah, and you know what? We did that to a real home um, where, you know, the doors are hollow. And it, same thing. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be a solid door. It, it holds. They can hold smoke and fire back pretty pretty well. Um, pets. I always get this question. Pets. So if so, dogs are different. Dogs can usually smell what's going on sooner than you, so they might act weird, um, and then you know something's going on. Um, so what you can do, whether it's a cat or a dog, is if you can try to treat treat or quick train them to get into a crate. If they're big, get um, like a leash, make sure your leash, the crate, everything is near the front door. And if you can fill that crate with like a treats, medic medication, um, toys, um, a bowl, and just get ready you know, to put them in or a leash, like I said, and, and bring them out. The thing about cats, if they're not an outdoor, you know, they shouldn't hopefully be an outdoor cat, but. Um, a lot of times it's safer to leave them inside um, because they hide. They hide underneath the bed. They hide underneath the um, couch. 
And then you let us know you have a pet and we can go check on them. And we usually keep that door closed and they'll be fine. We've had reptiles, birds, fish, um, several animals, right? And if and then if it comes time, we will get them. But it's but let us know. We don't rely on stickers. We don't take time to read stickers. Our number one um, job is, is our people. Okay. Um, also, uh, microchipping is a good thing. And we do often call the County Humane Society to help catch animals if they get out, away. Um, and they uh, they really don't go that far. And then a lot of people are, are um, they help. Um, so yeah, if you can tell us, uh, let us know um, when it when it comes to to pets. So uh, almost done here. So a weather meeting with a single juvenile, which I actually like. I don't know if, if it's because I like the naughty children, but to intervene in fire setting behavior, presenting fire safety in throughout uh, the city. And as we go, out, I sometimes go out of the county too. Community educated is committed in sharing the message of safety and prevention, you know, including injury prevention. Our goal is to reach all members of the community and help others understand preventable nature of most fires and injuries. We work to create an environment conducive to change. So thank you guys so, so very much. Mike, if you want a copy, oh, you do have it. I'm more than happy to share, more than happy. Yeah. I'll uh, print off a PDF of this, uh, you know, uh, a PDF and make sure that everyone can download it if they'd like to. Okay. And uh, really appreciate uh, all this great information, Bernadette. Now, I yeah, wonder, what, would you be able to, if other people wanted a presentation, you know, not a, a lot of communities don't have a person like you dedicated to this kind of education. Would you be willing to do that outside of town? I, I guess I would be, um, if, Depending on a fire, how, how far, you know, I like up north. It's pretty up there. <laughs> <laughs> we have relatives up in St. Germain. But um, <laughs> if, if I don't mind at all, in, if it's on Zoom, um, and, you know, absolutely. I, I love my job, and I love sharing. And, again, it's all about safety. Um, and once we're safe enough, and you know, to do in person, but it is... Isn't it nice sometimes not to just get in the car and drive? I sometimes I think it's I'd rather have people just be safe in their home, right? Also, um, but absolutely, um, like whatever you want, and um, again, absolutely more than happy to share um, share my stuff. Yes, Great. and do so, any kind of talk. Yes. Yeah, if uh, you're interested in having uh, Galve uh, Bernadette Galvez talk with your group or uh, whatever, you know, get in touch with her. She's yes. fantastic. <laughs> yeah, and then maybe in the future, Mike will do even more, right? <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, Bernadette's got a whole bunch of uh, things here, and we're thinking about uh, scheduling her for another uh, group here, uh, another presentation coming up. Yes. So uh, thank you. It's great. Any other questions for Bernadette?